Hi, this is James with Burr King. Uh, real quick in this video, we're going to show you how to mount the lawnmower blade sharpener to an existing machine. Uh, we have made this product available for purchase if you already have a Model 760 grinder. Uh, we're going to do it today on one of the old style uh, guard and door machines, just to kind of show you what that entails. It's a little bit more complicated. You have a couple more steps that you have to do. We have to trim the guard away here. Uh, what is nice about the Burkening, though, we came out with a replacement guard about six years ago. So we can take this guard here and put a new style guard on there. It just bolts right on. It's a real nice kit. Basically, it offers you something that you don't have right now. This nice internal guarding here. The doors also are a cut back, so you get a little bit better access to the contact wheel. Uh, another improvement we made was the latch here. We're using a rubber grommet and a stud. So real nice, secure, not a whole lot of vibration. This is available as a kit. Like I said, bolts right on. Real nice. Uh, go ahead and call Burking. They'll get you a quote on that for a replacement to upgrade your guard. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take look at your machine. Like I said, this is an old style. We don't have any guarding in here. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect the power. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and remove the belt off the machine. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove our contact wheel. That's a 15 16 nut. Just take the ratchet, remove it, push from the center. That comes right off of there. This machine has a smooth wheel. Most of the standard machines did have a smooth wheel, 55 durometer. Uh, when we run the mower blade sharpener, we use a 90 durometer serrated wheel. A little bit better cooling, a uh, little bit more aggressive cut. It's an inch and a half wide. That's the only size wheel that you can use with this attachment, is an inch and a half wide. So if you've ordered the kit, it came with that wheel, uh, so you're ready to go. Next, we're going to remove our guarding here for our contact wheel. Remove our tool rest. That's all done with a 3 16 Allen. Next, we're going to prepare the machine for drilling. We have to drill one hole in the frame here. Uh, to do that, we've sent along a jig for you to drill. The jig mounts right here in these two bolts that hold the frame on. Uh, when you disconnect these, there's two on the other side, so don't worry about your machine falling apart. You're just going to take a half inch wrench and go ahead and loosen them up. they got to come completely out. Okay, once you have the bolts removed, we'll go ahead and we'll mount the fixture into the two holes. Your fixture for drilling is going to probably look a little bit different than this. We sent a fixture along with your kit. We sent a drill bit and also a tap. Uh, so you'll use all that in this process. So we'll go ahead and tighten this down into the holes where we took the two frame bolts out. You were charged a $50 deposit on this when you ordered the attachment. So as soon as you're done with it, if you'll go ahead and box it back up and return it to Burger King, we'll make sure to credit that back to your account. Return the fixture, the two bolts that hold it in, the drill bit, and also the tap. We'll get you credited back up. So you want to go ahead and make sure to get these all secured down so it's nice and tight. We don't want any motion, any movement in there. Once you're tight, go ahead and you're going to need your drill. Take your bit that came with your kit. We're just going to drill right through here to the frame. Once that's done, we can go ahead and remove the drilling fixture from the machine. Go ahead and set that fixture aside. Go ahead and clean up your shavings here. Get them out of the way. I don't want them to fall back into the next step here. 
We also sent you a cap along. This is a 15 16 uh, coarse thread, 18. Uh, we did not include a uh, tap holder. You can take, mount this in a slow speed drill, or you can use a quarter inch wrench if you don't have the attachment there to your tool holder, tap holder. Just go ahead and start it in there and finish it out. It does make the job a lot easier if you do have a tap and die set and a holder, but you can do it with a wrench as well. We'll just go ahead and get that tapped out real quick. I want to make sure when you tap that you're going into it nice and straight. You don't have to force it. We're just putting a small thread in there so it's not going to be real hard. We're cutting into the cast aluminum web there. It should be real easy for you to go ahead and get that in there. Nice threads. We can go ahead and replace our two frame bolts now. Let's go ahead and get them back in there. Alright, we'll go ahead and tighten these up, make sure they're all snugged up here, our frame bolts. Next we're going to take, and if you ordered the chainsaw bar straightening attachment, uh, you can go ahead and mount that right now. Basically what that's going to give you is a nice 90 degree angle to this backup platen. This is included in the chainsaw bar straightening kit. Uh, you can take and dress up your chainsaw bars, use a 120 grit or finer belt, put it on there, rest up here on top of the contact wheel guard. So as you can see, what you'll do is just pop these two screws off there, mount this up, and you can have that there. We're going to go ahead and mount our lower blade sharpening attachment on here now. Basically it's just going to slide right over the bearing housing there. We're going to use the shoulder bolt that was provided to you. We're going to go ahead and thread that in the hole that we tapped and drilled. Why that's so important is we don't want this to move around any. We want to make sure it's sitting back flush. So that's going to make it real easy to find the proper spot for that to go. Just put it in there, snug her down, Take the nut that you received, go ahead and mount it on the back side of the machine. Grab your wrench, tighten that down. So as you can see, this is still loose here, but we this floats back and forth. But it doesn't give it any motion up and down, so we're in good shape there. This time we're going to go ahead and make sure it's snugged up to the shoulder. Just snug it down. And that's going to make it nice and solid. Now we can take and go ahead tighten up our other sporting allen here. That'll just make it nice and rigid. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and put our contact wheel guard on. Now we'll put it on there like that. We're not going to tighten that down right now. We'll do that when the belt's on. This is the contact wheel that was included in your kit. This attachment has some height in it. You can adjust it up and down. That's basically for different thicknesses of blades. So if you have somebody that has a real thin residential light use blade, eighth of an inch, you can take and raise that up a little bit so you can still hold that 30 degree angle. But if you have a nice thick blade, like you'll find on the commercial mowers today, you can take and lower that down to give you a little bit more of an angle there. So now that it's on there, we're going to go ahead Let's put a belt on here. Tension it up. Now I can take, it makes it a lot easier when I take and set this to my backup platen where it needs to go. We just put it up there so it's just lightly touching the back of the belt. You don't want it protruding out, so there you go. Alright, now we got that on. Go ahead and spin the belt around real quick. Make sure the belt's tracking good. Close the door. But as you see, this is the old style guard. I told you earlier we'd have a couple more steps if we had the old style guarding. You can see we have some interference issues with the table that holds the blades. So if you look at the new style guard door that's available, you put it up here, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of difference there if we hold it up edge by edge. You know, so we're going to go ahead and cut this back a little bit. I'm going to let you do that on your own. 
Uh, everybody's a little bit different on how they want to do that. Take an angle grinder on there so you can do it while it's still on. You can take and go ahead and unbolt it from the actual machine. Take it over to a saw and cut it if you'd like. Make it a little bit easier. That's really up to your preference. I'm not going to go through that right now. So there it is. After your door's been modified, it'll close up. I hope you enjoy your attachment. If you have any questions, contact Burkhead Manufacturing.